all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. May be used against us. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. Just in cover. tell you a, uh, a brief story here so quite a long time ago back before we had molly and pals and uh back even before we had alice gear things were a lot rougher for uh soldiers marines people who had uh, to use web gear and so on and so forth uh back in the vietnam war they had a lot rough the uh, the standard ammunition magazine carrier was designed to hold three magazines and a couple of frag grenades it went onto a web belt and was held up with suspenders and uh I don't know what the uh, the M16 gunner's combat load was back in the day, but uh, I don't think it was as quite as high as it is nowadays. And the, uh, the the web gear, it just really wasn't cutting it. And uh, some of the people who found out that the web gear just was not cutting it uh, quicker than others were Navy SEAL teams. And so these SEAL, SEAL teams wrote home back to a place called uh, Natick Laboratories or the Natick Soldier Center, um, and basically bitched about uh, about their gear and how they uh, they weren't. Uh, they were basically, uh, some of these SEALs said that they were picking up, you know, Chicom, the Chinese-made communist gear that was uh, given to the VC or NVA. They were picking that up and using it because they thought it was better and they thought it worked for their needs better than uh, their own issued gear was. So Natick Labs came up with a, uh, a design for a sweet load-bearing vest that had uh, enough room for uh, some grenades, some ammo, a few accessories like a survival kit, that sort of thing. And uh, the SEALs got it. They liked it. And... Uh, not up until 1988 did everybody else get to uh, enjoy the same sort of uh, high-speed gear. So that's what uh, today's video here is about, is about the LBV-88 or the uh, the Deuce gear, 782 gear. Um, I like to call it my, uh, well, in black, I like to call it my Sarah Connor rig, you know, because she wears it in Terminator 2. But, uh... Terminator 2. But, uh... That's what we're going to talk about today. And I think it's a really underrated piece of gear. And I wanted to uh, explain some of the things that I think are the pros, some of the things I think are cons, some benefits, and so on and so forth. And uh, I'm going to do that with my handy Mini 14 here. So some of the pros from the uh, <coughs> LBV-88 here, or the load-bearing vest, is that uh, you can find these things very, very inexpensively. Uh, traditionally, they're available on the surplus market, usually in a three-color woodland camo. And boy, I've seen them as, as low as like 10 bucks at flea markets and stuff. And considering that the, the actual U.S. issue ones are all made out of 1,000 diner and nylon and well-stitched and everything, they are, a, uh, they are a steal for that. A lot of people um, think that they're more or less obsolete what with modern molly gear and equipment and you know your own customizable loadouts but not everybody necessarily wants uh you know 100 percent customizable vest one thing that's really nice about these um lbv 88s is that they come pretty much all together they have the four pou pouches for magazines and then the two for grenades and a belt and that's it you can if you really want to you could strap some more alice pouches on the belt or or whatever or even you know there's room on here for molly or stuff on the shoulders and, and so on and so forth but uh it's kind of a one-stop solution. They're uh, one size fits all, very adjustable. Whether you know the same vest without really more than a couple of sec uh, seconds of adjustment, there's a little uh, basically um, lacing on the side that you can tighten up or loosen. You can go from uh, wearing it over a flight suit and or you know your bare chest to over heavy body armor or winter clothing, which is pretty cool. Uh, and no matter how you adjust it, it'll always be the mags and stuff will always be in the same place, always be in the same time, very consistent. It's also very light. It's only a pound uh, and a half or so for the, uh, the unloaded rig. Uh, you know, call it six pounds in there. It's less than seven pounds for a combat load, probably, which is, is pretty good. My Mini 14 weighs uh, about that much. And uh, some, some other benefits about it that are really nice is that when you do go to reload and take a... Uh, new magazine put it in you see how close that is here if you know unless you're doing the old school military style reload where you know you hold the thing out in front of you and rock it in that way these pouches right here on either side 
are very, very easy to access. Uh, they're very, very close to the magazine wall of the firearm, you know, with uh, that less distance, meaning a slightly quicker overall reload. And uh, another thing that's really nice is these pouches are really easy to get at. You'll see that they're kind of on my belly, but uh, they're actually far enough on the side that, especially with these side ones, uh, even if I'm on the prone, on my back, pretty much any angle that you're at or any position, you can still pretty reliably pull these, uh, pull these magazines out of the pouches. Another thing that's cool is these will fit just about any freaking magazines. Uh, unless you're, you know, trying to stuff like a Barrett M82 mag in there, that's obviously not going to work. But uh, it'll take 308 mags, it'll take Mini 14 mags, AK mags, uh, aluminum body GI mags. And uh, it, it says you're supposed to be able to fit a total of six magazines. Uh, the top pouches hold one, the bottom pouches hold two on either side. So, you know, double that. Uh, and that's with your GI aluminum body, very thin um, Santag NATO mags, right? Uh, if you run like Magpul P mags, yeah, you're not you're not gonna get two in the bottom one. Your capacity is gonna go down from from six to four. But probably the same thing with any 308 mags that you're carrying. Uh, I'm pretty sure these things are big enough. You can probably even stuff Saiga 12 magazines in there without much of a problem. And uh, another thing that's nice about it is it generates the load kind of on your shoulders, but the belt system really helps kind of keep it in your hips too. I'm thinking here. Some of the things that I do not like about it are the uh, the mag retention. The flaps here, they both Velcro and button on, which means that sometimes to get this pouch open, you really got to rip that fucker. Pardon me. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, you know, having to uh, run a belt with it either, um, which you pretty much do the way it's set up. You so really I was going to right film a little bit more footage for the rest of my review, but I ended up not getting around to it. So, uh, I guess here's some music. This is an original um, track that uh, I composed and uh, called it Murder. 